All right, guys, we are two weeks away from the NFL draft. It still feels crazy to say. For me, this draft process has just flown by, and I'm so excited for that day to finally come. But we have two more weeks, so that means we are on the last three Green Bay Packers seven round mock drafts. Thank you guys for being along on the ride of all my Green Bay Packers mock drafts. This will be version 9.0. So again, this mock draft will include trades. And if you guys didn't watch any of the previous ones, we used the Rich Hill trade value draft chart instead of the PFF trade simulator as it's simply just not realistic. So anytime I do a trade on these mock drafts, I'm using the Rich Hill chart that basically assigns a point value to each pick and I make sure they're equal or very close to equal in terms of that trade value. So without further ado, let's waste no more time and get into it. Bring up the draft screen and we still sit at pick 25. Last week we made a trade up. This very well could happen again. Uh, it just depends how the board falls. But right now we're at 25 and of course the Packers have a ton of draft capital. They have 11 total picks tied for first in the NFL. So if they wanted to move up in the first round or say up in any other around they have the ammunition to do so so let's get these picks out of the way up until a point where either I think I need to trade up or to pick 25 all right so we're on the clock I didn't feel the need to trade up this time although there were two cornerbacks at 20 and 21 with Terry and Arnold and Cooper DeGene but I traded up to I think 19 last week for Terry and Arnold so again I don't want to make every single mock draft the exact same the point of these things are to you know give different scenarios situations to see hey if the Packers went this route how would the rest of the mock play out? What if players would potentially be available at certain spots? So let's go over the picks. We have Caleb Williams at one, Jaden Daniels at two. I'm, I'm glad that finally is happening now in the simulator because that's the way I believe it'll happen. And Drake May at three. I feel like these first four picks is exactly how it's going to go. Harrison at four, Malik Neighbors at five. I, I think he might drop a little bit, especially over Roma Dunze with the character concerns coming out. Uh, Adunze at six, Joe Ald at seven, Dallas Turner at eight, Brock Bowers at nine to the Bears. That just makes no sense, right? Uh, I mean, the Bears could. It is the Bears, right? But uh, Fuaga at 10 to the Jets. JJ McCarthy falls to 11 to the Vikings. They'll probably have to trade up to do that, but um, there's no CPU trading in this simulator. Quinion Mitchell at 12, Fatanu at 13, Byron Murphy to the Saints, Jared Verse to the Colts, Latham to the Seahawks, Fashanu to the Jags, Mims to the Bengals, Bo Nix um, in the first round here at 19, which I think Bo Nix goes in the first round. Uh, just depends of where. Rams, I actually do like that fit. He could sit for a couple of years under Stafford. Arnold at 20, DeGene at 21. I, I made my video on Cooper DeGene yesterday and how I, I think he's perfect for the Green Bay Packers. Um, you know, I think the Packers would have to trade up. Will they do that for someone like Cooper DeGene? I'm not sure. I just don't know if he'll fall all the way to 25. I think 20 to 21 is honestly right around where he is going to go. Three straight cornerbacks here, actually. Then Wiggins to the Eagles. I feel like it's a perfect fit for the Eagles. Uh, Brian Thomas to the uh, Vikings here. And Jerzon Newton to the Cowboys. So we're on the clock at 25. Latu still on the board. He's someone that has continued to fall and would be very intriguing, a very like pro ready edge guy with a ton of production the last two years, 12 sacks in 2022, 15 sacks in 2023. I mean, look, 96.3 PFF grade last year. I mean, the guy played excellent. 2.65, 265. I, I definitely think he would be on the Packers board. We also have Kool-Aid McKinstry, Jackson Powers Johnson, Graham Barton. And someone I've talked about a lot, but I don't know if I've actually mocked him to the Packers in any of these mock drafts, is Graham Barton. I mean, I started talking about him maybe around 3.0, 4.0 in terms of, hey, this is a guy uh, that I believe the Packers will be heavily interested in in the first round because... It's kind of just the linemen the Packers like, and I know they normally don't invest in first-round linemen, but if they were going to, they probably are going to invest someone like Graham Barton, who can pretty much play all five spots, is probably one of the best athletes at um, offensive linemen in this draft class. He's 21 years old. He'll be 22 uh, very shortly, but that's fine. 6'5", 314, and Graham Barton, you know, will probably be uh, the starting center for the Packers next year or two years from now. This year, he could fill right in at right guard if you need him to. I think he'll be a great center at the NFL level. You could also play him at tackle if you really needed to. So Graham Barton allowed two sacks last year, two sacks the year before that. In 2022, he had a much better PFF grade, 88.2. In 2023, a 75.9. Good pass block grade, good run block grade. I just love Graham Barton's versatility. And 
Josh Myers, you know, he played better than a lot of people thought last year, but it is the last year of his deal. And I think it's the last year he's going to be a Green Bay Packer. So the Packers very well may, may run with Josh Myers in 2024. Uh, but this gives depth. This gives competition. So if Graham Barton goes out and has an excellent offseason, excellent training camp, excellent preseason, you know, he very well could be the starting center, right? The Packers need interior offensive line depth and competition. Taking a look at his RAS as an offensive guard, it's a 9.99. Elite speed, elite agility, and good size grade. And if you switch it to center, He's a 10.0. <laughs> he is literally a 10.0 with elite agility, elite speed, and elite size. That That's just insane. Uh, we know how much the Packers love their athletes, especially on the offensive line. Uh, so with pick 25, we are going to go Graham Barton, offensive lineman, we'll call him, out of Duke. All right, so after Graham Barton, uh, I actually stopped it here at pick 31 because I saw a player continue to fall, and I figure why not try out a theory where the Packers trade back into the first round after already selecting someone at 25 because they pick again at 41, so it's not that far off of the, of the first round. A lot of teams like to trade back into the first to get that fifth-year option on a first-round player, and we're sitting right here at 31 with the San Francisco 49ers. So if you were to swap 41 and 31, the Packers would have to give up pick 91. That third round pick is the exact value to move up those 10 spots from 41 to 31. So we're going to go ahead and offer that trade. It's going to be accepted. And the player I'm looking at is Kool-Aid McKinstry. If the Packers could somehow end night one with Graham Barton at 25, trading back into the first with one of their two third rounds, the later one at 91, and select Kool-Aid McKinstry, and leave night one with Graham Barton, who could be a day one starter at center or guard, and Kool-Aid McKinstry, who could be a day one starter at cornerback, man, that would be a win, a massive win in night one of the NFL draft. We've gone over Kool-Aid a couple times. I definitely want to do a uh, prospect spotlight on him in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully, I'll get the time to do so. 88.8 .8 PFF grade last year. Only allowed one touchdown. Allowed 19 receptions on 39 targets. 73.1 passer rating allowed. Last year, 59.7 passer rating allowed. Uh, man coverage grade is great. Kool-Aid McKinstry lines up well in what the Packers are going to like to run. Um, in the Halfley defense, you know, if they're running a lot of single high and their cornerbacks on the outside have to man up a wide receiver, Kool-Aid McKinstry, I think, is a great option for that. He only allowed a completion percentage of 48.7 last year. He had 10 forced incompletions, eight coverage stops, only three missed tackles. I think Kool-Aid McKinstry fits very well in this Packers defense. They had a top 30 visit with him, so it also just makes sense. I believe he's one of their... Um, favorite cornerback options in this draft in in the first round like if the Packers were to truly go cornerback in the first round as much as I do like Cooper DeJean it just feels like uh, Cooley McKinstry would probably end up being their pick and I would be fine with Cooley McKinstry at pick 25 so if the Packers get Graham Barton who I love and and the Packers you know obviously need help at interior offensive line and then only tra and then trade back up 10 spots with just a third rounder I'm completely okay with that value if it's going after someone like Cooley McKinstry and now you get him on a five year deal as well so with the 31st pick after trading up with the 49ers back into the first round we are selecting Kool-Aid McKinstry cornerback from Alabama all right before we dive into the second round I wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor of the channel BetUS BetUS is the number one online sports book in which they are currently offering a 125% deposit match up to $2,500 on your first three deposits that means if you put in $500 then you would have $1,250 to play with. BetUS has 24-7 customer service and 24-hour payouts. Click the top link in the description to receive your bonus. I'm also giving away $125 in free play. The first five people to DM me on Twitter showing that they do have a BetUS account, whether that's a screenshot or their account number, will be credited with a free $25 bet on your account. Also on BetUS, there are a ton of different draft bets you can place. Uh, you can bet on certain picks being certain players, as well as what players to be drafted in the top five. Obviously, we have Drake May, Marvin Harrison, but some other players that could potentially sneak into the top five, in my opinion, uh, Joe Alt and Roma Dunze. I think both of those, and that's good odds for Roma Dunze at plus 1,200 to be a top five pick. Yes, he very well could be pick six, seven, or eight, but I think he could sneak into the top five. I think the Chargers just could outright select 
select Roma Dunze at pick five. So we're going to go ahead and place a $25 bet on Roma Dunze going in the top five. That would win $300. I think that's a good bet. So if you guys want to tail my bet, head to BetUS, sign up, get a 125% deposit match on your first three deposits. All right, so now back into the mock draft. We're in the second round, pick 58. Uh, we traded pick 41, traded up. So this is our first second round selection officially. So Marshall Nealon just came off the board at 57. I feel like this guy just keeps sneaking away from me, and I've wanted to mock him to the Packers so much to this point. So some players on the board, Adiza Isaac, Jermaine Burton. I believe the Packers actually met with Jermaine Burton. Uh, I don't know if they'll go a receiver in the second round. Uh, I'd be a little shocked, but again, it's the Green Bay Packers. We have Jonathan Brooks here. Uh, they could go at 58. We have Chris Jenkins, Jaden Hicks, Edron Cooper, Junior Colson, Braylon Trice. There's a ton of options here at 58. Um, Adiza Isaac is definitely intriguing. Nine sacks last season. We've gone the mutant a few times. I think we went in the last mock draft as well. Uh, Jonathan Brooks, I don't know if I've mocked him to the Packers yet. I think they've had at least a virtual visit with him. Um, the Packers, you know, they have Josh Jacobs, they have A.J. Dillon. I, I don't know if they'll spend a second round draft capital on a running back. I, I know they did it with A.J. Dillon years ago when no one thought they would. So it, nothing would surprise me with the Packers in terms of drafting a running back in the second round. Uh, but I feel like you kind of need to address a much bigger need here. And that is linebacker. And there's two very nice linebackers available right now. So considering there's two linebackers available, and I'd be happy with either one, I've mocked Edron Cooper a bunch to the Green Bay Packers, so I might try to target Junior Colson here, who, in my opinion, would be a great strong side linebacker in this Packers defense. I'm going to trade down with the Kansas City Chiefs because there's a couple wide receivers on the board that I believe they would trade up for after not going receiver at the end of the first round in this mock draft. So this is about exactly the same value. We're swapping 58 and 64. Then they're giving us 159 and 173, and we're sending over 202. So let's go ahead and send that trade. And man, oh man, I got played. The Chiefs did indeed draft a wide receiver, but I didn't expect both linebackers to go right after that. Colson above Edger and Cooper, which first off I did not expect that I'm um, at 59 then Cooper at 60 I expected Cooper to go within these picks uh, but Colson usually falls to the beginning of the third round and I really expected him to fall yet again and that simply wasn't the case this happens right uh, you know, you trade down expecting a player to be there. Maybe they aren't, but y the draft moves on. So we're here at 64 um, at the bottom of the second round. Uh, there's still good players on the board, right? Chris Jenkins, Jaden Hicks, two players that uh, I've mocked the Packers plenty of times. Uh, Braylon Trice out of Washington here. You know, the last two seasons, eight sacks, nine sacks, 274 pounds, 6'4". I feel like that's a player, the uh, an edge rusher that the Packers would be targeting. And I feel like most mock drafts, I've kind of neglected edge. And although the Packers have decent depth there, right? Preston Smith, Rashawn Gary, Lucas Van Ness. They're going to be without Inek Barre for a while. Um, they have Brenton Cox Jr. They have Colby Wooden, who probably will play defensive end in this new 4-3. But you can never have enough guys to rush the passer. I say that time and time again. So I'm going to preach it here, and I'm going to go Braylon Trice with this draft pick. Um, I've talked about going Marshawn, Marshawn Neeland earlier. So, hey, why not go edge here at 64 with Braylon Trice, who I just think fits the mold for the Packers. The summary here says this is a powerful edge player who will never shy away from the contact trench play demands. You might have to line him a bit wider to unlock his disruption potential, but he is NFL caliber and should be picked in the top 50. And he was very high on pressures the last couple of seasons, although it's not crazy amount of sacks, eight sacks this year. Nine sacks the year before that. I mean, a 17.6 pass rush win rate. He has 68 total pressures in 2022 and 66 pressures in 2023. So he 100% knows how to pressure the quarterback. Like I said, the Packers need more depth there. I think adding more guys down low will help this defense. Getting after the passer is the recipe for success in this new aggressive style type of defense. So at pick 64, we are going Braylon Trice, which I think is awesome value um, edge out of Washington. So a quick correction. Uh, I looked at Braylon Trice's RAS, and he weighs 245 pounds. I have no idea why he was listed at, what was it, 270 on PFF? I, I don't know why <laughs> that it, it, that's listed as that. I know that was a lot of my reason why I went Braylon Trice, because 
it, it just like fit into the Packers mold. I think they want to go heavier edge. But at the end of the day, the Packers still need pass rushers. Now, someone that I think they might have gone at that spot over someone like Braylon Trice might be Austin Booker, who I know they just met with. You know, still a little bit on the lighter side, but he has a lot more length at 6'6. Last year, also nine sacks. But the production of Braylon Trice uh, doesn't negate based off of the wrong size that was listed. It is a little bit annoying. Uh, I definitely should have checked this RAS beforehand, but at the end of the day, he still had 68 pressures in 2022 and 66 pressures in 2023, and the Packers need more um, edge guys. So it is a little annoying, but I'm still not like mad at the pick. Now we're on the clock at pick 88, and there are some options here, right? We have Trey Benson at running back, who a lot of people are very high on. Um, and think he's one of the better running backs out of this draft class. We have Jeremiah Trotter Jr., who I, I don't think I've mocked to the Packers yet. Um, one of the best football IQ linebackers, uh, but a little bit undersized. You know, six foot, 230 pounds, but a super smart linebacker and could definitely play the mic, which right now the Packers are kind of missing. So I'm very intrigued here by Jeremiah Trotter Jr. We also have Dominic Puny here at tackle. We have Jerry and Jones at corner, DeAdrian Taylor, Demerson at safety. There are a ton of different options here, but I think I'm most intrigued with Jeremiah Trotter Jr. You know, rank 88th prospect, average draft position of 88, and we're sitting here at 88. It kind of just feels right. I've never mocked him to the Packers, so I'm trying to change things up in this mock and just mock different players to the Packers and different, you know, ideas. And the Packers have a need at linebacker, and I think they have a need at the mic. And Jeremiah Trotter Jr., I think, could be a, a day one starter at the mic. Last year, he had an 85.7 overall PFF grade, 53 tackles. Now, he did have 15 missed, a 16.3 missed tackle rate. A little bit high there, uh, but I think that, that will get cleaned up. A run defense grade of 80.4. Um, he had 21 run stops. He allowed 24 receptions on 27 targets, but also had two interceptions and allowed a passer rating of an 82.7. Um, I think there's a decent drop off at linebacker after this, and we've yet to address it, and the Packers have a need at linebacker. So we're going to go Jeremiah Trotter Jr., linebacker out of Clemson here at pick 88. We're back on the board at 126, and for the past like three to four mock drafts, I've really neglected running back, and some people might be saying, oh, well, you're waiting to the round four anyways, but I am going to go running back, and I don't think I've drafted him since maybe the first or second mock draft. And that is Braylon Allen out of Wisconsin. I know a lot of people do not like him, but there's also a lot of people that love him. And it's probably the Wisconsin bias, right? I understand it. Uh, 6'2", 245 pounds. You might be saying, hey, well, he's pretty much identical to A.J. Dillon. Um, I, I would agree, but I think he he's a better A.J. Dillon. And A.J. Dillon was brought back for pretty much a veteran minimum. No risk, like the Packers could cut him if they really wanted to and lose absolutely zero money. And... I think just adding Braylon Allen into this running back room would be super intriguing to have, you know, three basically power running backs. I mean, it's like old school football. Just run the football up the middle, right? You have Josh Jacobs, A.J. Dillon, and Braylon Allen. And Braylon Allen is a player that, you know, can do it all. I, I think he can be used in the pass game. I think he's going to be a tremendous pass blocker in terms of pass protection at running back, obviously with this size. And he's one of the youngest players coming out of this draft. He's 20 years old, and he still will be on draft night you know last year wasn't the hottest 982 yards but the two seasons before that over 1200 yards um over 11 touchdowns in each season last year he had 28 receptions on 30 targets for 131 yards he forced 49 missed tackles 682 yards after contact and this was in a down year so i think he's a good running back and i think the value is there in the fourth round and i do think the packers add a running back in the fourth fifth or sixth round so at pick 126 we are going braylon allen halfback out of wisconsin so we are going to make a trade up here in the fifth round at 142 the Panthers had back-to-back -back picks uh, we're going to trade up and select another defender here we're going to offer 159 and 219 for 142 just about the same value there we're going to go ahead and offer that trade and there are two options here in terms of a, a trade up at 142 that I was eyeing uh, one of which is Cedric Gray and the other one is Christian Boyd. Now, we went Jeremiah Trotter Jr., but Cedric Gray, more of an athletic type of linebacker, um, weak side guy, coverage linebacker. And I think adding two guys into that room 
is definitely an option in this draft. I think the Packers will do that. But we also have Christian Boyd here um, sitting at 140. I've drafted him before, and, and I love the thought of adding Christian Boyd to this defensive line. Um, I, I think they need to add one more guy, and I know we already added Braylon Trice, but he's primarily an edge guy, and after that whole <laughs> weight fiasco, he's definitely an edge guy. Like That guy is not moving inside at all. And we've yet to draft a defensive lineman but we've already drafted a linebacker and I think there are some other options later at linebacker and I know a lot of people like Cedric Gray and he is definitely an option here uh, but I think I'm going to go Christian Boyd just because I want to add another lineman into that room into that defensive line room 6'4 317 a great run stopper but can also get after the passer you know had three sacks last season but run stop rate of a 7.8 percent 89.0 PFF grade last year 88.5 PFF grade the year before that the Packers have met with him um, and it just seems like a pack fifth round pick similar to the Carl Brooks one last year in the sixth round so at 142 we are going Christian Boyd defensive lineman out of Northern Iowa so we're going to make yet another trade we're going to trade up yet again with the Indianapolis Colts here in the fifth round pick 151 and we're going to be basically swapping a duo of picks that equals the same value 151 and 191 for 169 and 173 so we're going to go ahead and offer that trade and we have yet to draft a safety and the safety I am eyeing here is Malik Mustafa you guys know I've mocked him to the Green Bay Packers plenty and we've yet to draft a safety in this draft class safety is weak in this draft class so the Packers very well could wait to around four or five um, to get their first one if the draft board falls that way but Malik I think translates exactly into what the Packers need a box safety the hair on fire type of role that Jeff Halfley loves to say 79.6 PFF grade last year 62 total tackles run defense grade 87.5 so really good against the run we need a guy that can play the box against the run we just went Christian Boyd to help against the run now we're going Malik Mustafa he allowed a pass rating of 79.0 only allowed 15 receptions last year had an interception forced three incompletions he can play in the slot 144 snaps he mainly played in the box 327 snaps but can also play deep 163 snaps so if the Packers went in like a two deep look I would be fine with Malik Mustafa being back there with Xavier McKinney so at pick 51 we are going and Malik Mustafa safety out of Wake Forest. All right, so we're back on the clock at pick 191, and I think I'm going to add another offensive lineman, another versatile offensive lineman into this draft class, and that is going to be Tanner Bordellini. I believe I've mocked him to the Packers once before, and he's listed as a center, uh, but I think he's going to be a guard at the NFL level, and I think he's going to be a good one. I think it's great value here in the sixth round. I think this guy could go as high as the fifth round due to the versatility. Um, last year, he mainly played center, and judging by some Wisconsin fans comments that's not his true position there was multiple times where he like was rolling snaps and whatnot uh not a true center but can play there in a pinch uh where he's much better is that inside guard or and then at right tackle in 2021 he actually had an 87.0 grade but not too many snaps but to last year 411 snaps at left guard 163 at right guard and 74 at center and had a 74.3 pff grade playing three different positions which is very impressive he's only allowed three sacks the last three seasons great pass block grade last year 80.3 to me this is a green bay packer lineman not only because he's from wisconsin 6'4, 310 looking at his ras as a guard he's a 9.77 ras um okay size elite speed elite agility elite explosion you know adding graham bar and Tanner Bordellini, two very versatile guys that could play center, could play guard, could pay, probably play tackle. I think it's exactly what the Packers want to do and what they've always done when drafting linemen. And here's a six-round lineman. The Packers have made that work before. Runyon was a six-round lineman that ended up being a starting guard. So it's not out of the realm of possibility for Tanner Bordellini to maybe be starting right guard at some point next season or the year after that for sure. So we're going to go Tanner Bordellini here at 191 out of Wisconsin. Here at pick 245, we're going to go quarterback. And uh, I don't think I've done this in a mock draft yet, but I, I do see the Packers doing it. Like I think the Packers will draft a quarterback in this draft. Gutekunst has commented on this multiple times that he needs to add more players into that quarterback room. And we know the history of the Packers, you know, drafting quarterbacks sometimes when you you don't think they will and then turning that player into a higher draft pick in terms of a trade later down the line and I think a good option in the seventh round is Sam Hartman out of Notre Dame I think he very well could go before the seventh round uh, but last year 24 touchdowns eight interceptions still a decent season but when you look at the two seasons before that right 38 touchdowns 12 interceptions 39 touchdowns 14 interceptions you know always kind of had an interception problem right but for a seventh round pick I think this is awesome value a 78.6 grade last year deep 
grade 95.6, 6 212, 24 years old, will be 25, so a little bit older in terms of a quarterback. You know, he, he seems like he's been playing college football for a very long time. Uh, but I feel like that would be a nice third quarterback in the quarterback room behind um, – Sean Clifford and, you know, a potential, you know, someone you develop and, and trade down the line or someone you develop and you trade Sean Clifford down the line, right? It just gives you options there. So we're going Sam Hartman, quarterback out of Notre Dame at 245. All right, so at pick 255, uh, I, I took a couple mocks off from doing this, but I'm going to go back to it. I'm going to go Katana Oladapo. Again, I, I see him going in the fifth round. Um, he could even go as early as a fourth, if we're being honest. I think he's criminally underrated, and I think on draft night or on day three, we'll see that, that, you know, Katana Ladapo was criminally underrated. Um, and if not, and if someone gets a steal in the sixth to seventh round, and I hope it would be the Green Bay Packers, we, we have the picks to do so. So if he's there in the sixth or seventh round, I think the Packers should 100% run that card up for Katana Ladapo. I've talked about him enough. I don't have to break him down here for you guys. You can simply just look at the, the stats here or check out the video I made on him, the prospect spot. So to finish out this draft, we are going Katan Oladapo, safety from Oregon State. All right, so let's go over my Green Bay Packers seven-round mock draft, version 9.0. And man, this was an interesting one. This was definitely a different one. I went different routes pretty much on every single pick. You know, Graham Barton is a traditional pick at 25, but outside of that, everything was kind of unorthodox, which is what I kind of want to do. I want to create unorthodox situations in terms of a mock draft so we can kind of see how it would play out, right? So we go Graham Barton at pick 25. Everyone could agree that that seems like a Packers pick. We don't have to explain it too much. He could be our, our starting center. He could be our starting guard. He could play tackle on a pinch. Then we trade up back into the first round because Kool-Aid McKinstry was sitting there at pick 31, giving up a third round pick, pick 91. I think that's great value. And if you want to get back into the first, get that fifth year option, go get your cornerback after getting your offensive lineman. I think that's an awesome idea. Will Kool-Aid be there at 31? He very well could be. So this, this is a possibility. Like this could happen. Trade up, get Kool-Aid McKinstry at 31. If we end draft night one with Graham Barton and Cooley McKinstry, I am I'm ecstatic. So we go Braylon Trice at 64. And this was a little bit of a mistake, but let me clarify. It had him listed as like 270, which I thought was a little bit weird, but you know, not not crazy. Like, okay, that there's definitely some edges that are 260, 270. I haven't done much reaches research on him, so I didn't really know. Then when I checked his RAS, I think he was 245. So my reasoning behind Braylon Trice was I think the Packers want to get heavier at defensive end. They still have Colby Wooden. They can push out there. But at the end of the day, they don't have depth right now with Enigbari being hurt. And they're going to need more depth. So although he's not the 274 he was listed out on PFF, PFF, if you're listening, please fix that. Um, yeah, it's basically my fault. I get it. But like... <laughs> But he still had a ton of pressures, over 130 pressures the last two seasons. So the production's still there, and I think it would be an awesome piece to have in that edge room next to Lucas Van Ness, Preston Smith, and Rashawn Gary. Just rotate these guys in and out and get after the passer. Then we go Jeremiah Trotter at 88, someone I've yet to mock to the Green Bay Packers. Um, high, high football IQ, and I think he's going to be a, a good Mike linebacker at the NFL level, even though he's a little bit undersized. You know, football runs in his blood. His father, Jeremiah Trotter, was a great linebacker, and I think he will be as well. And I think he'd be an awesome add into this linebacker room, just kind of taking up that communicating type of role linebacker with Isaiah McDuffie and Quay Walk. I think it's exactly what they need. Then we go Braylon Allen at pick 126. I know there's already going to be people in the comments hating on Braylon Allen. It's either or. It's the same thing with Blake Corum. It's it's either you love him or you hate him and there's no in between. But we went Braylon Allen at 126. Let's just go power football, guys. Let's just add guys into that room with A.J. Dillon, Josh Jacobs, now Braylon Allen, and just run the football right at the middle at the defense over and over and over again and then hit him through the air when we need to with Jordan Love. And I think that's what Matt LaFleur likes to do then we go Christian Boyd at 142 after a trade up mocked into the Packers a couple times good run stopper also good at getting after the passer you know we added two defensive linemen technically in this draft and I think the Packers could do so an edge and a defensive lineman then at 151 we trade up yet again we go Malik Mustafa the first safety in this mock draft uh, I really like the thought of him in the fifth round to be our box guy but also 
could be a two deep type of look safety uh, next to McKinney. Then we go Bordellini at um, 191. I think this is good value in the sixth round. I think Bordellini, one of the most athletic, versatile linemen, you know, actually kind of similar to Graham Barton, just not a first round uh, pick. But a lot of people have him in the third, fourth round, fifth round. So we get him here in the sixth round. I think that's awesome value. Then we go quarterback, I think for the first time in any of my mocks. But Sam Hartman in the seventh round. I think the Packers go quarterback, probably sixth or seventh round. Um, and Sam Hartman is a good option there. Then we rounded out with Katan Oladapo, who we've drafted plenty and plenty of times in one of my draft crushes. If he's there at 255, it's a home run. But um, I don't think he will be, but he is in this mock draft, so we went and selected him. So that rounds out my Green Bay Packers seven-round mock draft version 9.0. There'll be two more mock drafts after this. Let me know what you think of this mock draft. Again, I kind of wanted this to be a little unorthodox, and I feel like it definitely was. So let me know some of your favorite picks, some picks you didn't like, or there's some other players uh, that are on the board at certain spots that you want me to take a look at. Let me know down in the comments below. But I appreciate you guys coming by to the video. If you could, please leave a like down below. It supports the channel a ton, but I'll catch you on the next one, and as always, Go Pack Go.